2020 has truly been a difficult year for many businesses in the country. But maybe one of those that has been hardest hit would be East African Breweries Limited. This is following the restrictions on the sale and consumption of alcohol in public spaces like in bars, restaurants and eateries. So what has business been like for the East African Breweries Limited? How hard were they hit? And what ways have they uh, managed to innovate to stay afloat? I had a conversation as part of our Events 2020 coverage with Jane Karuku, who is the CEO and Managing Director of East African Breweries Limited, the first woman to head this big organization. And we spoke about a number of things, including business in 2020, the role of women in leadership, amongst other issues. Here now is that conversation. Jane, thank you for speaking with me. What has business been like in 2020 for East African Breweries Limited, considering the restrictions that were put in place by government against use of alcohol, of course, at entertainment joints and bars, and not just for them, but for many across your value chains, including farmers and distributors? Mm. Many thanks, Yvonne. I think 2020, who would have imagined? You know, annually we do what we call scenario planning or war gaming, and we look at very many different situations and actually we do have a, a stream called a pandemic but in our wildest dreams it was never this size so and i think uh, if you think about it the last 100 years there's never been something like this so it's been tough for us uh, remember when it struck in march we thought it was a joke we thought it was for other countries and then by may june our trade was shut bars were shut and of course Kenyans, like any Kenyan, we were all very, very shocked because that's what we knew traditionally as where we made uh, business. So we've had a lot of change internally. Yeah. I think the first one, we were determined as an organization to keep em everybody employed and to keep our entire value chains working. And I think we've done a pretty good job. Uh, if I start with the farmers, um, I think there was a bit of time we had to tell our farmers we can't take all the grain because our silos were full because we were not producing. But luckily we are back and, and the contracts now are, are live and we hope to get a good harvest in the next three months. I think if you look at the factory, a lot of us, we shut, we shut the office since March. I've been working from home since March. A lot of the office people do not go to work, but uh, as trade has been opening, uh, factory has opened now and now we almost are operating on a 24 hour basis, which is very, very, very good. Trade, mm -hmm. tough. Yes. Uh, I think the, the first thing we did is that Kenyans still want to consume some of our brands, so we became very innovative internally. So I'll start with e-commerce. So all of a sudden, I'm sure you've seen yeah. a lot of change with e-commerce. Yes. You can order your favorite drink via social media, via Border Border. Mm. Our distributors became very proactive and they went deeper to find the consumer. Yeah. So I think we are very, very grateful to the partners we have the distributors across the country. So the other thing we had to do was innovate. So a lot of our brands, only a few were in current format. So of course we have spirits which you can afford to, t to buy and take home for consumption yeah. or a place of your choice. Right. So a lot of our innovation was around putting every beer brand into a can format. And what about uh, the bars? They've been you know, identified as potential hotspots for the spread of COVID-19. What are you doing with them to make sure that they're still able to do business responsibly, but also prevent the spread of COVID-19? We are supporting them also to come back. So we have a lot of money. Yeah. We have global money uh, given by Diageo, which is worth uh, 200 million shillings plus our own so combined we have, have about half a billion shillings mm -hmm. to just bring on trade back on yes. trade i mean bars so we are spending this money to ensure there is social distance all the protocols that the ministry of health is talking about so social distance in some bars we are putting screens so that you can enjoy and i can join next to you but there's some 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 divider of some sort the washing of hands the sanitizing mm -hmm. and the information so if you go to a bar where we are supporting, as you enter, you see uh, information, you see the protocol, wash your hands, and you see the bar looks different and there is distance. Plus education, I think um, at the end of the day, all those things can be there, but it's up to the individual to take care of themselves. Yeah. 
And away from that, and just looking at the way business is done in general, there are some who say that the tax regime is particularly a bit more punitive with businesses such as yours. Government being strained for more resources, particularly at a time like this, and always falling to syntax to be able to raise more revenue. I think we've had a lot of conversations with government and we've also done a lot of study in terms of understanding the elasticity of pricing and consumption. Because at the end of the day, I think I understand where government is coming from. They want more tax. But this more tax is from a small pond. Yeah. I think we've been trying to encourage them. Let's make the pie very, very big, even in our own industry. And the way you do that is to grow the volumes. Then you have more to tax. Mm. But what has been happening in the past is we increase prices and the pie gets smaller and smaller. So what we are seeing is shrinkage of volumes, which doesn't augur well in the long term of the business. Mm. So I think the policy of taxation, especially syntax, needs to take a different um, strategic intent in terms of uh, let's, let's get the growth going because if you look at our industry, we actually work across a lot of value chain. So the net effect or the network effect, as you may call it, is quite big within the chain. So let's move away from your core business now and, and focus on the COVID-19 pandemic. And you've been at the helm of the COVID-19 fund. Where does that stand at this moment? How much money is in the kitty? Are your priority areas still the same as from the last time when I spoke with you? So on COVID-19, I think we have not changed the priorities. I think last time we spoke, I told you we had two priorities, mm -hmm. livelihoods and protecting the health workers. And we committed as a fund that for 18 months, we would provide PPEs to 68 COVID-designated hospitals. We are still doing that. And they are, we are replenishing them as they use. So Kenyatta Hospital, Moi Forces, I think I shared with you who the 68 hospitals are. So we are still committed. Obviously, guys have been hard hit, so we are not getting or raising as much money as we would like. But we understand Kenya is tough. Yeah. But I'm very happy there's a vaccine. Yeah. So hopefully we wouldn't need to go and raise money yeah. to protect people. And also, I hope Kenyans will behave, particularly around Christmas time, to make sure that we don't have a peak in January. Mm. So when we're talking about the issue of PPEs, which has been an area that you said uh, is one that you are focusing on, how does it make you feel then when you hear the doctors, uh, perhaps in uh, facilities that you may not necessarily be working in, but you hear them complain about the lack of such an important and basic tool like personal protective equipment? I think, Yvonne, when we started this work, that's why we worked with local content and local manufacturers to make sure that right, correct, quality PPEs is available for everybody. Now, I don't understand whether it's a logistics that is an, is an issue uh, because you can buy PPEs locally now. Uh, we use a very efficient uh, replenishment uh, uh, platform with Fargo Courier. So as you need in the hospital, it's, it's presented to you within 24 hours and we have committees within the hospitals. So I really don't understand what's happening in the other hospitals where we are not operating. I guess I don't have enough information to answer you, unfortunately, Yvonne, but it's, un it's unfortunate. Yeah. 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 So talk to us about accountability with the, the COVID-19 funds. You had mentioned uh, that you would continue to update the Kenyan people about where we are with the funds. Uh, when do we hope to hear the next update from you? So, so I think at the, at the turn of the year and beginning of January, we will come back to you. And by the way, our information is still available on the website, but we'll come back and publish. Congratulations, uh, Jane, on your appointment as East African Breweries Limited Group CEO and Managing Director. Um, tell us about this moment and what it means for you. It's exciting, but it's also you have a bit of anxiety in terms of uh, I need to make sure that I do a, a great job. I think uh, EABL, like you know, is a great company. So I'm standing, it's 1,500 employees, I'm standing on giants and I, make, I need to make sure that I, I don't disappoint them and together we make Kenyans and Africa proud. As a woman, what would you say uh, have been uh, the attributes that women in leadership have brought uh, during this COVID-19 crisis? We have seen many countries led by women being cited, Germany and New Zealand. What unique attribute have women brought to leadership at this time of a crisis? Mm -hmm. I think the first thing is that women have always been great, but I think there has always been some unconscious bias. Now, once I think it looks like we are starting to get rid of that unconscious bias. But I also think that women bring a lot more at the table. They are more emotional, they are more compassionate, they are more empathetic. And therefore, from an emotional and EQ perspective, 
we tend to be a bit bigger on that and therefore can deal with multiple of issues at the same time and uh, we can rally people together I think probably a, a lot more and I don't want to be in trouble with my men folk yeah. but I think I think the bigger thing is that the unconscious bias being kicked out and then we see women as leaders and therefore their leadership skills just comes out and they can compete yes. with anyone. And you are doing something with that, we understand, at East African Breweries Limited, boosting uh, you know, women at various uh, places of leadership within uh, the organization and also within the advertising that we will start to see going forward. What are your goals for women at EABL? Diageo has a big performance ambition and one of the must-dos is inclusivity and diversity. Coming home at East African Breweries, so we've been on this journey to be 50-50 by 2025. Currently, we are just shy of 30%. And by saying that, we need to bring in more women. Our board is just shy of 30. Our managed leadership team is just about 30. And across the total entire organization, we want to be 50-50, so watch the space. And it's because we believe our consumers are diverse. If we include a lot more of the diversity we see across, and whether it's and it's across the entire value chain from farmers yeah. up to the consumers, even in advertising, we have what we are calling progressive portrayal of women. So our ads will start to look more inclusive, not just a few guys enjoying okay. our brands. <laughs> because yeah. women enjoy it too. They enjoy it too. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Like everybody else, Jane, I'm sure um, you know COVID-19 has hit us all in various ways. Um, it's affected our mental health. What has COVID-19 been like for you, Jane, as a leader, as a woman, as a mother, as uh, you know, a member of your family? Tell us about COVID-19 and Jane. How has this affected you personally? It's just been a very stressful time. So first of all, you're responsible for an organization. All the 1,500 people expect you to show them direction and some will get sick along the way, some business will not be delivered as you expect so you have that responsibility then you have responsibility as a family you're still a family person and around you people will get sick their friends uh, your neighbors covid will be a challenge either financial terms or health reasons so it's been tough and um, i think i've learned to take it easy i've learned to keep exercising because i think it gets the toxins away i've learned how to stay on zoom for a whole day and not get frustrated <laughs> I have learned how to have work. You, have you been the one that tells people to <laughs> unmute your mic? <laughs> I, 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 your mic. I get told that more often than I tell people <laughs> that, so? that unmute your mic, which I think is going to be the statement of 2020. So what is your outlook for 2021, Jane? When you take a look at, uh, you know, where we want to go with our economic recovery post COVID-19, what does this moment look like? What do governments need to do? What do institutions need to do? What do individuals as well need to do as we move towards, hopefully, what will be a recovery in 2021? If I was an SME, to look at it, it's, it's to diversify what I'm going to do because we've discovered if you're one line of business, things can be tough. And that's what we also discovered, that uh, we need multiple lines of business. We had spirits and we had beer. I think that's where probably we've survived. Mm -hmm. We went to formats, we went to working differently. So, so I think uh, there are many lessons about be agile. Our teams work differently now than they used to work before. They work in teams that are far, out, far, far from each other. So you don't need to be with your leadership to be accountable and responsible. So, so I think we need to be agile, more responsible, more accountable, and to think a lot more about tomorrow. What if things didn't run as I had? What, what, will, I, what will I do? save a bit more, both as companies, as countries, as individuals. Absolutely. Stay close to family on personal levels. Because yeah. yeah. at the end of the day, that's all you have. Thank you very much, yes. Yeah, thank you very much, Yvonne. And Merry Christmas to you thank and happy you holidays. And a Merry Christmas to you as well.